ants, termites, roaches. What are we going to do about them, but still protect all of our bees and ladybugs and praying mantis? Well, I think I'm going to talk to a professional and find out what's what. Well, some of our insects are great, but sometimes they want to crawl in the house and cause damage. So I'm here with Greg McCauley with Orkin to find out more about what we need to freak out about and what we can do to prevent problems. Hi, Greg. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. So yeah. let's just jump right into the tips I need to know when I'm getting my garden ready for the spring. What are some of the biggest things I can do to keep all those ants and termites and other things out of my house? Well, certainly one of the things is to keep the mulch away from the house. Uh, we do have a tendency sometimes to pile the mulch up a little heavy against the house. It does hold temperature, it does hold moisture, and it is a food source for the termites in particular. So keeping the mulch away from the house is something that is one of the keys to keeping the termites from getting out of the, in the house. All right, well, and it's been, you know, raining a lot in the spring, which is great. And I have been looking at my downspouts, I'm putting in a rain barrel. Anything I need to be careful with there? Certainly always keeping the water or channeling the water away from the house. Uh, we want to keep the water from coming off the downspouts to get it away from the house so that it doesn't collect there at the foundation. Oh, fantastic. So the ants, you know, I figure they might come in, they might go back out. I'm not going to worry too much about them, but termites. So I've looked around and I'm not seeing termites, so am I okay? Certainly not. Um, we never know. Even a professional pest control company, we do a thorough inspection and we still are only doing a visual inspection. We're looking for things that are conducive for the termites because many times we don't see the termites themselves. We only see the damage or the conditions that are conducive. What about ants and roaches? What can I do? Is there a treatment for them? Well, certainly. We have a little over 4,000 species of ants here in Middle Tennessee, and many of them are just a nuisance to you when they get to the house. But there is one in particular, the carpenter ants, that can do some structural damage. And they're looking for moisture around the foundation, moisture at a window, maybe a plumbing leak, uh, again, the mulch stacked up against the house, the firewood, and that's how they'll gain access to the house. They don't eat the wood, they bore into the wood to colonize and lay their eggs. So they can do the same type of damage as termites. Wow, I don't want that. And I imagine there's something that we can use to treat for that? We certainly can. We Again, we do a thorough inspection and depending on the level of activity or the level of infestation, we'll customize a treatment based on your home in particular. Okay, now I especially like to grow vegetables and fruit. You know, it's all the rage now growing your own food mm -hmm. and so much fun and yummy. Um, are there anything I need to know about if I'm going to have my house treated? Can I still grow something? Well, you certainly could. We recommend any uh, ed edible vegetation to be planted at least three feet away from the foundation. Um, if for some reason you can't get it three feet away, then at least get a raised garden. Because when we treat for termites, we're treating down into the foundation and down into the soil. So you want to get those, that vegetation either up and or away from the house. Okay, well that's very doable and it sounds like I need to keep those plants a few feet away from the house Three anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that'll also help uh, prevent me from watering too much right against the house. Exactly. Well, speaking of carpenters, I have some interesting little holes in my deck I want to show you. Well, let's take a look. Well, Greg, I've seen these wonderful large bees floating around. Sure. And I know they're good pollinators, but I'm wondering if that might have any connection with these holes that I'm finding in my deck. Well, they certainly are. It's a, it's a carpenter bee. It's a very large, uh, almost looks like a bumblebee, and they can and will bore into uh, wood that is not freshly painted or stained. And when they bore in, it's about a dime size hole, and it typically will turn in and make a sharp 90 degree turn. Uh, they will lay their eggs, and um, that's when the, uh, when the damage occurs. Again, it's not significant structural damage, but it certainly does some damage to the railing of the deck. Well, as we're doing some new planting, like this bed here, starting to put in some new flowers and things, I'm a little concerned about making sure I don't get the pests all excited. So what if I run into a bunch of ants? Well, you certainly could. And you know, you could run into ants, you could run into termites. Um, the thing that you wanna do is, if you have any type of granulars for ants, uh, to get, go ahead and get them around that area now so that you don't allow the ants to spread or split the colony and get closer to the house. Aha, very good. And what about um, over the winter, is there anything I can do to sort of help eliminate some of these pests ahead of time? 
keep the debris, keep it clean, keep the leaves off of it. Um, if you have extra grass clippings, make sure that you get those pulled away. All right, that sounds really good. And now I'm wondering about some of the instructions on things like those granulars. Um, is this something that I can handle? What type of things should I look for on the uh, packages? Uh, certainly uh, natural products, but any of the granulars themselves, uh, typically you would like to wear rubber gloves or cloth gloves, but you don't, because you're not worry, really worried about the contact to your skin more so than the, the, the uh, smell on your skin. If you're a smoker or if you wear a heavy perfume or cologne, that will deter the ants from being from coming to the granulars. Aha, uh -huh, which is the bait that you right. want them to so get into. So it's the odor that's the issue. All right, now I imagine the amount I use when I put it down, whether or not it's going to rain. Yeah, they're all, all of the labels are gonna be slightly different, so it's very important that you read and understand the label prior to applying anything. Fantastic, and now what about if I'm near a creek or a natural spring or something? Certainly, you're going to have to be very careful. Uh, some of most of the granulars that you're going to use will not penetrate into the soil, so you'll not have any issues. But if you're using a liquid of any kind, it can penetrate into the soil. So you'll just have to read the label and be safe. All right, make sure it doesn't run off into my stream mm -hmm. and disturb any of the wildlife. There. That's right. All right, well, thank you, Greg, so much for taking your time today to spend with us and let us know what we can do about our pests and how to be careful with them. Great. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.